Welcome back guys to another episode of NextGen VR. I will be comparing the performance and the latency of wireless streaming through virtual desktop on the Quest 2 and compare it to using Oculus Link with the Quest 2 and at different frequencies such as 90 Hertz or 80 Hertz. So um, I've, the results are surprising. So let's jump into the next generation. So first I'll show you guys tests using Oculus Link. So with the Oculus Link on the device, I have it set to 90 Hertz and resolution automatic. Then I tested it in both 100% and 150% super sampling in Steam VR. All right, so for the first test, I'm using 90 Hertz with 150% super sampling in Half-Life Alex, and let's see how this plays out. So I can tell you guys right away that it looks really good, way better than I expected, where up close things look very sharp and the colors look pretty nice as well. Um, from a distance though, like here, you will see that the gray looks a little bit like uh, static on a television. So in some far distances, there's a little bit of that. Uh, and I'll show you guys my fidelity settings. You can see I have fog on medium characters, low shadows on medium, and that's because um, these settings improve performance while um, not affecting the image quality that much. So I can tell you guys it felt completely smooth playing this with through Oculus Link, so I was quite impressed. It's similar to um, how it performs in uh, like uh, re native PC VR headsets. So I get mostly consistent image with occasional um, uh, pixel clustering from a far distance, but um, its picture quality is still way, way miles above what the Valve Index is, for example, and comes pretty damn close to the Reverb G2. So at the Quest 2 at only $300 and being able to play through Oculus Link by buying a cable for a bit more money, that's a pretty decent deal. Next, I tried the same thing at 100% super sampling and picture still looks good. Now, I'm not sure if that's because uh, automatic resolution I left enabled in Oculus app itself. So the resolution on SteamVR might not be making a difference. But uh, overall, picture quality looks really, really nice and better than I expected. Now let's do the same test, but this time no cable needed. This is a uh, wirelessly streamed PC VR through virtual desktop. So what you're seeing is the wireless experience and I have to say that it felt smooth about 95% of the time. There were periods where you can notice the frame hitches or like uh, feels a little jitter. But uh, overall, it was actually smoother than I expected. And I have to say that the feeling of freedom from the wire felt really nice. Just being able to turn around without worrying about the cable behind my back is very nice. And uh, for some reason, the picture quality seems to look even better or equally as good as the Oculus Link. So I'm very impressed. Now, um, there were some occasional hitches. so. If you are especially sensitive to VR motion sickness, you might notice this, but overall it's definitely very playable. Now here you saw a small glitch, so that happens occasionally, but uh, not as often as I expected. Now keep in mind, I'm using the best PC a money can buy, an RTX 3090 with an i9-9900K CPU, and I'm also using a uh, good Wi-Fi, I'm, my desktop PC is connected to wired connection and on the Quest 2 I'm connected through 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So um, your results may vary. Now I'm playing this with, um, what is it, 
I'm playing this with about 80 Mbps for bitrate, which is about the sweet spot. And at 90 FPS, it runs perfectly smooth. Now you can experiment with these settings. So if you reduce bitrate to lower, you will get slightly lower image quality, but better latency. Also, when I switch to 80 Hertz, I noticed that there was way less hitching. So if you can stand 80 Hertz or even 72, you should have no problem having a completely smooth experience playing wirelessly on the Quest 2, and that is really, really nice. So testing at 80 hertz also works great and feels even smoother. So um, I would definitely recommend lowering the refresh rate if you experience any hitching or jitters. You can see that the tracking is perfect and there's no latency most of the time. So I move my hands, it's exactly where it needs to be. So I'm pretty much impressed. Visual quality is close to the G2, but the G2 is still definitely the winner. So, um, yeah. And now I'm testing wireless streaming for Pavlov. So for Pavlov, I'm running at 90 hertz and uh, 80 bitrate. Now for Pavlov, it looked pretty nice. And I would say it ran smooth about maybe 70, 80% of the time. So. For fast-paced games like Pavlov, wireless streaming might not be the best option, but if you want to play wirelessly like Half-Life Alex or slower-paced games, then definitely wireless streaming is very nice. Um, and so, yeah. Last but not least, I tested Pavlov through Oculus Link, and I have to say that this felt like a completely smooth experience, no latency. Visual quality from a distance was a little bit lacking, but up close it was pretty nice. And then when I played a match of Gun Game in Container Yard, I was able to play the whole game uh, without any issues at all. And um, so you can just guys watch me play and see how how the latency is for you guys.
So, thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already for many more Quest 2 videos. I'm going to be doing deep dives into many topics and following your guys' suggestions. So leave any ideas you have in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time.